Namaste. Today we will be studying death and the art of dying according to the Bhagavad Gita. Death, many people have this question, what exactly it is? According to our scriptures, death is the fall of the body. But the body is not all of you. In fact, the body is only the external crust of your personality. So, it is very easy to understand death if you consider the human personality paradigm given in the Panchakosha model, which means there are five sheaths which the soul wears, which the Atman wears as it were. And the most external crust or sheath is what is called the Annamai Kosh, which is the body. Then, uh, subtler than that is the Pranamai Kosh, the vital energy sheath. Then there is the mind, the Manomai Kosh. Then there is the higher intellect, the Vijnanamai Kosh. Then there is the causal sheath, which is the Anandamai Kosh. And beyond all of these is the Atman. This is the Panchakosha model. So actually, death means only the separation of the Annamai Kosh from the rest of you. It happens by the snapping of the Pranamai Kosh. Because the Pranamai Kosh, the Pran, the breath is the link between the body and the mind, the rest of you. So when this, the that link is snapped, the Annamai Kosh gets separated. So the body falls as it were, but the rest of you continue. The mind with its bundle of sanskars, tendencies, with all its attitudes, its bundle of karma, all of this and the inter your higher intelligence, of course the soul, all this is carried forward. So death is not the end of you. It is just the end of the body. That phase where you entered a particular body, it is the culmination of that phase. And since the rest of you continue, where do you continue? According to our karma, according to our actions and the sanskars we have accumulated over the lifetime, which are even stacked in our memory, according to that we take up, we go into different realms of existence depending on the kind of experience we require and then we take up another body. So the most important things about Life are more important than your bank account <laughs> is actually the karmic account. What exactly are, are the kinds of works you have done through body and mind? And very, very important is the sanskars you have created as a result of your karma. Because karma, you know, the internal effect of karma is the creation of a deep impression in your own mind, which is called sanskar. So you carry the sanskars and the karma fall, the effect of your entire karma along with you when the body falls. So once we understand the process of death, we will become very careful about these two factors, isn't it? About our everyday actions, our thoughts, the impressions we are creating within ourselves because that is going to stay with you. It's going to go with you. Everything else you are going to leave behind. Uh, the body, everything associated with the body, the houses we build, the cars we possess, the jewelry we possess, the relationships we make, all of these will be left behind. Everything connected to the body. But the impressions your mind has created, the karma which your mind and body created together, its effect, the karma fall, this goes with you. So take care of these this is what we should know about the human life. The most essential part of human life is to become rich in this, to have a really positive karmic account so that you are sure your future is safe. The Bhagavad Gita also gives us the art of dying. When is it that a man is assured of a glorious future? When is a man truly safe? When at the point of death, he is able to keep his mind on the Lord. See, this will not happen without practice, obviously, isn't it? If the whole lifetime we have been thinking only of material things or sensate pleasures, at the last moment also we will be thinking of the same thing or something connected with it. So what we have practiced our whole life, that will occur in the mind at the time of death. 
you please remember at that point your will does not work it is the mean total of your sanskars that come into effect that pop up in your mind and even after the body falls and this sukshma sharir the package of the mind and the soul it after it leaves the body then also your will does not function it is your sanskars it is your karma and that the it it generates a, a resonance and what matches that resonance the soul incarnates there so it's a kind of a law of resonance which works and not your will power there so understanding this we should be a, careful about the things we accumulate what is it that gets stacked up in our memory how pure is our life how devoted to the higher purpose is our life this is the most essential thing so the bhagavad gita tells us at the point of death what exactly happens in your mind will decide your fate after death will decide your destiny where exactly you will go so the uh, the verses for this i would like to quote to you from the bhagavad gita antakale tu mameva smaran muktva kalevaram ya prayati samad bhavam yati nasti atra samshaya lord krishna says which means at the last moment antakale mameva smaran muktva kalevaram one who leaves his body thinking of me lord krishna says one who leaves his body thinking of me at the last moment ya prayati one who goes like this sa madbhavam yati he attends to me nasti atra samshaya there should be no doubt about this because at the last moment one will think of god one will have a divine bhav only if one has lived a divine life so whatever the mechanics of uh, release whether you say passing out through the brahmarandra or passing out through any of the senses the essential point is where your mind dwells where did you commit your vital energies what kind of a life did you live what was your inner bhav this is what is going to ultimately matter so then if we are truly wise you will invest in the inner life right now in whatever position you are whatever age you may be you will invest in the inner life because only this you will carry with you so whoever thinks of the lord at the last moment of death he will undoubtedly un- undoubtedly have a divine destiny he will attain to the lord that is the meaning of these verses you see the next verse also says this yam yam yati smaran bhavam tyajantyante kalevaram tam tamevaiti kaunteya sada tad bhava bhavitah whoever leaves his body thinking of whatever thought he attains to that which he has been thinking about so that is why dedicate yourself to the lord dedicate yourself to achieving real bhakti in this life in achieving real knowledge in this life because that only will go with you you will attain to that bhav so please remember if we are not intelligent enough we will not know where to invest our vital energies ultimately what is going to matter this will not become clear to you unless you wake up the bhagavad gita is a message to wake up and claim your divine destiny by living a life which is truly worth living a life which is respectable which is dedicated to the highest values of life and don't waste your energies your vitality in silly small sensate things because whether you evolve or devolve will depend on this then the the final message which krishna gives in this regard is tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara to to arjun he says ma manusmara yudhya cha mai arpita mano buddhi mame vaishyas asamshaya that is why at all times in all situations think of me depend on me surrender to me ma manusmara yudhya cha remembering me go ahead and fight fight the righteous battle which is your dharma because you are 
a warrior. You are identified with that particular role in this life. So it is your duty to fight the war. It is a righteous war. And perform your duties, but thinking of me, with your mind resting in me. And Maya, that is why Maya Pita Mano Buddhi, that mind and buddhi which is dedicated to me, will lead you to me alone. Have no doubts about this. So you see what a beautiful conclusion. Whatever we are doing, whatever we are thinking, whatever roles we have to play in life, wherever we are placed, whatever situation, you are you always have the inner freedom to think of God. And if you have not understood this, then of course your mind will be pushed, carried away by a hundred external things and its own conditioning, its own compulsive habits will drag the mind anywhere. So bring this into your hands first. Bring your mind into your hands and dedicate it to the at the feet of the Lord so that His remembrance, His thought comes to the mind at all times. When this is practiced, at the last moment also you will think only of God. And a release of this kind will lead you to the highest in human life. A death like this will take you to higher realms of existence. And if you are born again, it will be a divine life. You will be born in, in worthy surroundings and you will be assured of a great future. So you see, if we are truly intelligent, we will know what to build in this life. Let us remember, especially to those who have awakened to the life of the inner spirit, you must remember your vital energy is to be invested in the higher values of life. This is the most essential part of education and training. If this is absent from our lives, you will invest only in infrastructure. You will invest in collapsing relationships. You will invest in feeble emotions. And at the end, in the evening of your life, it will be one of long drawn frustration leading to depression. You will wonder what is human life about. So take charge, take care. Right from now, dedicate yourself to the higher life. This is the message. So that at the end of your life, the thought of God alone reigns in your mind. What a beautiful message from the Bhagavad Gita. Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace.